Do you or anyone you know have diabetes? If so, watch this video. It's about how you can revolutionize your blood sugar control through a simple lifestyle change that should be obvious but that many doctors still don't understand. In a few minutes, you're gonna know more than they do. Diabetes, regardless of type, means that you often have too much sugar in your blood, right? It's uh, simple to measure by pricking your finger and using a basic blood sugar monitor like this one. Now, where does the sugar in the blood come from? From the food we eat, from a certain specific type of food we eat, and that has a great significance for what's happening in the world. In the 80s, there were 30 million type 2 diabetics in the world. How many suffer from diabetes today? 13 times more people. And the situation is rapidly worsening. There's soon going to be more than half a billion people, probably many you know. It's a total disaster as it's considered natural that people with type 2 diabetes get sicker every year, getting long-term complications like blindness, dementia, damaged kidneys and dialysis, heart attacks, amputations. So, a worldwide explosion of diabetes and disease. Why? The dietary advice that we are giving to diabetics is the problem. The base of the food pyramid consists of starchy foods like bread, pasta, rice and potatoes. And uh, starchy, fo starchy foods are broken down in the stomach to pure glucose. As it's absorbed into the blood, it's called blood sugar. That's where sugar in the blood comes from. And we're recommending that diabetics eat a lot of what turns into sugar. Now, why? Not because studies have shown that this is any good, but only because we thought it was good, or at least less bad than fat, which we've been afraid of for no good reason, it turns out. But when we thought that fat was dangerous, we had to give this crazy dietary advice to diabetics, because you have to eat something. And the my plate model for diabetics is similar. Most of it becomes sugar in the stomach and it raises blood sugar a lot. This is crazy. It doesn't work. And this is the reason that diabetics today need lots of drugs to keep blood sugar down because it's gotten high unnecessarily. Now, when we wake up and realize that it's okay to eat natural fat again, then we can look around and find something that has always worked better. A century ago, for example, before we became afraid of fat, before we had modern drugs to conceal these problems, at that time you only had one thing to help diabetics. Good food. Here's an example, a cookbook for diabetics from 1917, and you can Google this title and read it for free online. I'm just going to show you the summary. Two pages showing what diabetics should eat to the left and what they should avoid to the right. I'm going to start with the right page, what diabetics should avoid. And number one is sugar. Number two, foods made with wheat flour and starchy foods. And then examples like wheat flour, bread, cookies, rice and macaroni, meaning pasta. And the title of the page is Foods Strictly Forbidden. On the contrary, this is now the base of the food pyramid, the biggest part of the my plate model, while we're having an explosion of diabetics who are getting sicker and sicker. This is hardly a coincidence. To the left, we find the recommended foods. High-fat foods, like butter and olive oil, rich cheeses, meat, fish and eggs. And if you just add plenty of vegetables, this is identical to the advice that I give diabetes patients today, a hundred years later. So, what happens? Same thing now as then. Diabetics who try this always 
see their blood sugar improve. Often there's a huge improvement. If you don't eat foods that become blood sugar, you'll get a lower blood sugar. It's perfectly logical. Most people also lose a lot of weight and they may be able to lower their medication or get off it and feel great. For an example, an older gentleman with type 2 diabetes who was a patient of mine, he could stop taking insulin injections. His blood sugar still improved even without drugs. He became lean again. He felt great and every time he comes in for a follow-up, he says that he eats like a king. And I wish more people would get the chance to do so. In addition to this century of clinical experience, there are also a number of new scientific studies showing that a low-carb diet works very well. But if you don't wish to read a lot of studies, you can prove this for yourself in the simplest possible way. Again, you only need a cheap blood sugar monitor and two meals. This is a meal I had the other year, and this was before I read up on food photography. You should never use the flash, okay? But still, this was a great meal. A steak fried in butter, vegetables fried in butter, and homemade beignet sauce, meaning melted butter and egg yolks. So this is mostly butter, <laughs> and it's like a nightmare for an old-school dietitian. It's almost all saturated fat with a bit of protein and extremely low carbon. As you have a bit of this food, you can almost feel your brain stop working from a lack of carbs. No, that's not the case. I'm sure you know this is just an old myth. Now, where was I? Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. What happens to blood sugar when you eat this? Okay, this is uh, the vertical axis, it shows the blood sugar between 70 and 100 is a normal fasting level, and then it can increase after a meal. And the horizontal axis is time after the meal, up to six hours. And here's what happened. It uh, turned into a rather boring evening for me. I pricked my finger again and again, nothing happened, okay? Blood sugar stubbornly stayed around 90. So. If you eat almost no carbs, almost no sugar reaches the blood and your blood sugar will stay where it was. This makes sense, right? As a contrast, I then went to the world's biggest obesity conference called the International Congress on Obesity. This is a gathering for 10,000 obesity doctors and obesity researchers around the world. Once every year, they go to some place on the planet, and in 2010, they were in Stockholm, Sweden. So I went there to see what I could learn. And uh, ironically, I had the worst lunch I've had in a very long time. Here, they're busy bringing it out. And if you think it's impossible, you can look at the sign. It says, International Congress of Obesity, 2010, Stockholm, today's lunch. And here's the entire package you were given. Of course, there's sugar in the chocolate, and there's also sugar in the fruit. The energy comes from pure sugar, even if it comes packaged with good fibers and vitamin C. Now, the yogurt contains lots of added sugar, a total of 14 grams of sugar per 100. And this is going to make your tongue curl up if you're not used to it. And then there's wheat flour starch in the sandwich. Perhaps you, as I, was hoping for something nutritious inside, but then you would have been just as disappointed as me. It was supposed to be a tuna sandwich, but this is truly a homeopathic dose. doesn't count. So, the meal was only sugar and starch, and here's what happened to my blood sugar. I was actually shocked myself that it went up to 180 in one hour. And then you can see that after three or four hours, it's below normal. And as you might guess, I had cravings. I wanted to go and get something unhealthy. But in the name of science, I didn't. And my blood sugar stabilized on its own anyway. This is a typical result. 
Foods like this will make you full rapidly and then hungry again rapidly. And that's when you need to snack all the time and then you gain weight. But this is still considered a healthy and normal blood sugar curve. Had I been diabetic, it could have shot through the roof, stayed there for hours while this sugar was eating away at the small blood vessels throughout the body, damaging organs long term. And eventually, a diabetic eating like this could end up blind and amputated. But surely, Nobody gives recommendations this stupid to diabetics. Well, actually, they do. Exactly like this. Yogurt is okay, the bread is great, and the apple gives you bonus points. And when you've been this good and crave something, surely you deserve to treat yourself to some chocolate candy once in a while. Let's not become too extreme. As you know, we're always told by the junk food industry to eat a balanced diet with a balanced amount of junk. And then this happens. This is, in practice, what diabetics are advised to eat. Here's a fancy folder with advice that's still given out for free by healthcare providers in my country. You see a lot of fruit, pure sugar, perhaps not the best for a diabetic, right? In the brochure, they say that foods that raise blood sugar slowly are good. For example, fruit, rice, pasta, potatoes and bread. Exactly what was strictly forbidden a century ago and exactly what sends diabetics' blood sugar through the roof. Why are we giving advice that raises blood sugar and who is giving away these fancy brochures? for free. Well, in this case, it's a pharmaceutical company, as it often is. A pharmaceutical company selling drugs to lower blood sugar is giving out dietary advice that raise blood sugar a lot. So diabetics get sicker and they need to take more drugs while the drug company makes more money. It is filthy. It's conflict of interest and it should be outlawed. And there is a lesson for all of us in this. Never blindly trust lifestyle advice from a drug company because why would they give advice that made you healthy? If everybody got well, they would go out of business, right? Drug companies make their money on people who are sick for a long time, preferably for the rest of their lives and need a lot of drugs every day, like all the diabetics who follow this advice. Unfortunately, there is very little money to be gained from thinking different and producing good, real food instead. I was recently at the world's biggest scientific conference for diabetes research in Vienna, and here drug companies put their products on display at the conference 1,300 reports on new scientific studies were presented. The number of studies about not eating carbohydrates that diabetics can't handle, not a single one. And here is the participants' lunch. Now, what's inside the bag? Just like at the obesity conference a few years earlier, and the same thing happened to people's blood sugar. It can feel like total darkness. But there are some bright spots. More and more people are seeing through the nonsense. In Sweden, new official dietary advice for diabetics at least includes a moderate low-carbohydrate diet as a recommended first choice for type 2 diabetics. And a moderate low-carb diet will at least provide moderately good results, which is a lot better than yesterday's bad high-carb dietary advice. And in the fall of 2013, a large Swedish government expert review was released on foods for obesity. It concluded that a strict low-carb diet like LCHF provided the best weight and the best health markers, as long as you follow the advice. Finally, 
the unnecessary fear of fat that we have lived with for decades is about to melt away. Here's the cover of the magazine Time from 1984, when the fear of fat really caught on. And here's the cover of Time in 2014. Eat patter. Scientists labeled fat the enemy why they were wrong. The Swedish expert on nutrition, Professor Nyström, summarized the situation like this. When all new scientific reports are lined up, the result is clear. Our deeply ingrained fear of fat has no basis, and you don't get fat from fat, just as you don't get green from eating vegetables. No one has more to gain from this new knowledge than the person with diabetes.